2012 has been a high profile year for Britain. What impact has this had? Well, Britain has actually had a couple of years in the global spotlight, of course, with the Olympic and Paralympic Games last year, but with the Diamond Jubilee and the Royal Wedding the year before. We've had an unprecedented amount of global coverage, people around the world seeing on their television screens the amazing pageantry, the sport and the beautiful backdrops to the sport. And it's had a huge impact on Britain's image around the world. Uh, our research shows, an independent research from the Nations Brand Index, shows that people around the world have uh, changed their uh, image of Britain for the better. Uh, they see us as more friendly and welcoming. They see Britain as very, very strong for culture and sport. And uh, they also think that um, we've got beautiful countryside, impressions of the beautiful landscape have improved. And um, we can also see that there is a, an increased desire to visit Britain. So it's just been incredibly positive from an image point of view. How has the Great Campaign changed perceptions of Britain? Well, of course, the work that we did around the Olympics was to do uh, the marketing of Britain under the banner Great as part of the Great Campaign. We had a huge programme before the Games. We did a lot of PR during the Games and we had a marketing programme which kicked off the day after the closing ceremony. And uh, the impact of that now is coming through. We can see that uh, people, there are high levels of unprompted recall of the campaign, so where the advertising has been running, people remember seeing it. And of the people who, re the people who remember seeing the campaign are twice as likely to be visiting Britain, to be thinking about booking a trip here, or indeed already have booked, as those who didn't recall the campaign. So we can really see from that that the campaign is working. What returns have you seen on the investment in marketing? Well, altogether, of course, everything we do is under the banner great, whether it's the image advertising or our campaigns with partners. The campaigns that we run with partners, um, online tour operators, airlines, ferry companies and so on, um, they're all about booking now, closing the sale of people actually coming here. And when we evaluate all of that together and the work that we do online and our digital work, we, get a, we can come to a, a, a return on investment or a difference that Visit Britain makes. Um, and in the last year, that difference is overseas visitors spending of £460 million in this country as a result of our marketing effort. You're clearly driven by results. How can you demonstrate the value that Visit Britain offers? Well, in a number of ways. And we, first of all, we create uh, a compelling and uh, attractive image of Britain around the world through all the advertising and marketing that we do, the work that we do with partners like the English Premier League and uh, the movie tie-ins and so on that we do, which are all about building image and appeal. Um, and then with the work that we do with uh, commercial partners, which is about closing the sale. And partners find us attractive because of our um, our global network, the insights that we bring and the Britain brand that they want to work with and align with. So we can prove our value across our marketing assets, our international network and our marketing competence. And, and at the same time, we want to run, of course, a, a very efficient and effective organisation and uh, driving down costs where we can and keeping our staff numbers level at the same time that we are managing a, a bigger business. We have a, a, a quite an increased turnover on the business, uh, not just be, uh, through our government grant, but through the extra great money. And um, I'm pleased to say that we've also been able to save money through um, moving office in London, moving to really nice premises, but actually cost less and co-locating nearly everywhere around the world with the Foreign Office, uh, which has also saved us money, but also aligned us with one of our absolutely key British government partners. How has inbound tourism performed since the Games? Well, at the, by the end of last year, we had a 1% increase in visitor numbers and a 4% increase in visitor spend. 
which was a really good outcome for the Olympic year where we know that there is the danger of people staying away from the city and therefore the country that's hosting the games. So it was a really good strong performance. There was a good post games bounce. This year, the figures are very, very good. At the moment, uh, we are 13% up in terms of the value of uh, tourism spend in the UK, that the results that we have so far. And so I'd like to think that we really are seeing cause and effect here. We had the years in the spotlight, we had unprecedented amounts of very positive global coverage, and then all the work that Visit Britain and our partners and others have done to really maximize that that uh, showcase and turn those viewers into visitors and that people are actually booking and coming to Britain. And how do you sustain that success? We want to sustain that success by setting a long-term strategy for tourism to Britain. And we did that in, um, earlier this year when we published a strategy which takes us through to the year 2020. And in that, we set out an ambition of attracting 40 million visitors a year by the year 2020. So that would be up from our current 31 million visitors. And we look at each of our markets around the world and set out the potential from each of those, from China through to the USA. And the strategy addresses four things that we need to get right in order to build the value of tourism. The first is around the image of Britain, the second is around having the right product. The third is about distribution, making sure that Britain is packaged and sold through the travel trade. And the fourth one is about access, aviation and the visa regime. And so we say that you have to get the policy and the marketing aligned and that will then generate the success. So that's a strategy that we're working now with partners, with the industry, with destinations and uh, the other visits, visit Scotland, visit England and so on, um, to make sure that we, uh, that we succeed and that we generate those numbers of visitors. What does the future hold for Visit Britain? Well, we want to continue to work on the great campaign and uh, it's, it, uh, evolve that, bring more partners into the campaign. Uh, so we've got some fantastic partnerships already with British Airways, EasyJet, signed a new partnership with Emirates, for example. We would like to extend our partnerships more into the online travel space. We're already working with Expedia, but we think there's more potential to be working with tour operators and online uh, tour operators. And taking around to the world a real London Plus message, or you know, a, a Britain message. Many people want to come to London. It is the jewel in our crown, but there's so much more to Britain than that and working with tour operators to get itineraries out there that encourage people to travel around the whole country. Could you summarise 2013 for us? Well, 2013, I think, has been a really strong year of consolidation of the effort that we put in in the run-up to the Olympics and during the Olympics. And now we're reaping the benefit of that and really, you know, turning viewers into visitors and actually getting the tourism dividend as we see the visitor numbers coming in this year. There's still you know, a very competitive world out there. We've got to fight hard to keep Britain in the spotlight and working with partners to get people to come here and working with our partners in the nations and regions of the UK. Next year there will be a big focus on Scotland because Glasgow is hosting the Commonwealth Games, there's a big homecoming promotion and there's also the Ryder Cup. So we can use some of what the experience that we've gained through hosting the Olympics and what Visit Britain did around that uh, to help to leverage the opportunities of the Commonwealth Games. And the year after that we will have uh, England hosting the Rugby World Cup for example um, and you know, a huge amount of opportunities there. So as we look forward I think we can see a lot of really strong opportunities in terms of um, events that Britain is hosting and you know, all sorts of compelling reasons why people should be coming here and spending lots of money.